Off the coast of New England, way out into the ocean, turbines are spinning right now, generating power for the grid right about here. What does it take to get these complex structures in the middle of the ocean? Who's involved? And what are they made of? Turns out it takes a lot of steel. Here in Wellsville, New York, about two hours south of Buffalo, workers at the Arvos Lundstrom Steel Plant know a thing or two about what goes into manufacturing steel for offshore wind. They've helped produce advanced foundation components used for four different wind projects, and they've hit their groove. So right here, we have 265,000 square feet in this facility. Out of that, probably more than half of that is all related to offshore wind. We're building three different items, primarily anode cages, supported internal platforms, and along with main platform doors. These steel components are among the many interior pieces needed to allow workers to access and navigate the inside of offshore wind turbines during installation and maintenance. These parts are difficult to produce, requiring unique training for the American steel workers and welders, making these installations possible. It takes some getting used to and a lot of training to make sure they're putting in that qualified weld. For small towns like Wellsville, with a population of less than 5,000 residents, jobs supporting the offshore wind industry provide real benefits in their communities, spurring economic growth, training programs, and local development. The community is, uh, really has a buzz around this wind work. It's really helped the economy for this area. A lot of people have came to the community, which everybody sees it, feels the impact, which is in a good way. Once Lundstrom is finished with the components here, they get trucked down to Albany to continue their journey on yet another stop along the supply chain. At the same time in other parts of the state, a network of companies like Technostrobe Offshore Solutions, Litch Gitter USA, and BV Steel Technology are working hard to make and assemble smaller, but critical parts needed to complete the components Lundstrom has built. These include lights, electrical systems, cables, ladders, railings, and more. All of these parts are sent east to the port of Coimans outside Albany, where local installer Riggs Disler, a century company, gets to work assembling the components into finished products, complete with American concrete and reinforced steel. One by one, workers finalize the supported internal platforms, the anode cages, and the external working platforms, which include a door for technicians to access the inside of a monopile once it is installed at the project site. Riggs Disler recently completed all 84 of these platforms for the upcoming Sunrise Wind Offshore Wind Farm and Orsted project. To get the job done, they're employing union welders, electricians, carpenters, operating engineers, skilled laborers, and concrete masons. These union workers include Iron Workers Local 12 here in Albany. So I'm John T. Terry. I'm an iron worker for Local 12 on an offshore wind project. I'm, I'm kind of honored to be working in something that's going to be placed into the ocean. And I would tell my kids like, hey, I did that. That was, that was daddy, I did that. You know? Welders and other union workers assemble the pieces together, getting the completed components ready to be shipped by barge down the Hudson River, where they will await installation. Once they reach the Sunrise Wind Project site, located about 30 miles east of Montauk Point, New York, they will be installed onto the monopiles. These monopiles and other massive components, including the turbine blades, will be delivered from the Port of New London State Pier in Connecticut, which the project's developer, Orsted, is using as a staging and assembly site for several of their projects. Today, it's a unique story for these products to be fabricated, assembled, shipped, and installed from step one to completion in America. Building a wind farm is a colossal task, and it takes a supply chain that weaves its way across the country, relying on experts and manufacturers to bring the whole project together. And in New York, American Steel is at the heart of getting the task done.